guys for coming, and thank you uh, to everyone on live stream. I can't see you, but you look great. Um, my name is Perla Campos, and I am the PMM uh, for Google Doodles here at Google. Um, and we're here, hopefully everyone that's in the room and everyone on live stream are here for one reason, a very good reason, a really awesome reason, um, and dear to my heart. We will be launching a Google Doodle for Selena Quintanilla on October 17th. We're super excited. This has been a huge labor of love. And um, it has also been a really great collaboration with her family, the Quintanillas, specifically Suzette Quintanilla, who will be joining us here in one moment. Suzette is a sister, older sister of Selena. She was also a bandmate in Selena y Los Dinos, um, a pretty cool drummer if I do say so myself. And we're going to sit down and have an awesome chat about the life and the legacy of Selena as well as how they felt about the process of the doodle. So Suzette, welcome in. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. I'm not texting anyone. Don't, don't worry. I'm okay. just going to pull up the questions here. So uh, Hi, yeah, and then there's also a lot of people that you can't see. But if you, I don't even know where we wave to. Like maybe over, I don't know. But cool. Um, all those people in TV land. Hi everybody. Um, yeah. So we're just going to start off talking about like life um, in in the band. And I'm just going to be asking questions just so everybody knows. We'll do about um, 30 minutes of just my questions. Whoa. I know, that's, I know. <laughs> I know, you're probably like, I don't know if you can talk that long parallel. I don't know if you're able to. Um, but uh, after those 30 minutes, I'll open it up for questions. Um, or I don't know if we're able to take from the live stream. Yes, we, or no, okay, no, that's fine. But if anybody in the room has any questions, feel free, so I won't hog up all the time. Um, cool, so Suzette, we're gonna start off with, tell us about the early days. How did you guys first respond to the idea of forming a family band? And you were also all really, really young, so like, what did your friends at school think? Don't you remember that part of the movie was like, girls don't play drums? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. do I remember, I remember every part of the movie, Suzette, it's not you, but yes, um, yes. You know, a lot of people, I get asked that, quite often. Right. Um, this kind of just happened by chance. I mean, uh, my father um, had worked for Dow Chemical for like over 13 years. Mm -hmm. His dream was also, for, you know, at one point he didn't want that nine to five job anymore. So he, him and a friend decided to open up a Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. And um, it was around in the 80s. I don't know, some of y'all might have been born around in the 80s. <laughs> but it was around in the 80s, and um, long story short, it was when the oil boom happened and all that. Um, and we, it was open for not even six months, so we lost it. Mm -hmm. And around that time, um, Abe, my dad was teaching Abe how to play the bass. And then Selena, of course, she was the youngest, and you know the young ones always feel the need for attention. <laughs> so. She just started humming something, and my father picked up on it, and he was like, wait a minute. And so that's kind of how it started. It's a little bit of everything. It's how it just kind of flowed into how we actually started performing at um, different parties and things like that. Um, once Selena, he realized that Selena you know, had the capability of holding a tune at such an early age. Um, she was, I think, like around six. Mm -hmm. um, my cousin had been living with us from my mother's side. And he ended up, he was supposed to play the drums. And so he ended up uh, going back upstate to stay with his father. And so, Lord behold, there's a pair of brand new drums. I'm the only kid that's not doing anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you're going to play drums. I was like, wait a minute. And I really said that girls don't play drums. Because at the time, you know, the only uh, female drummer that was really well known was Sheila E. I'm sure a lot of y'all know who Sheila E is. Um, and, you know, she was the only one, and I, I remember him saying, well, Sheila E plays drums. I'm like, well, who's that? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, that's how we started playing, and, and then shortly after that, after we started, you know, performing as a family band, um, just like for little parties and things like that, whenever my dad would have um, friends over or some of our friends over, he'd ask for us to play, and we'd play like three or four songs. It seemed forever for us. Right. And um, then the restaurant ended up closing and, and we actually used to perform at the restaurant. Right. Yeah, like on Fridays and Saturdays. What and, was that like? Uh, it was cool, but it wasn't cool. Okay. You know, you're playing and then you can see your people that you go to school with. Right. You're embarrassed, or, uh, you know, that type of thing. But it really was a blessing in disguise because when, when my father, when the whole, we lost the restaurant, we literally lost everything, mm. like everything. 
we um, the house. Um, my parents really invested everything into that house, into that restaurant. So um, the only thing that we really knew was music. music. Mm -hmm. And so we started playing little gigs here and there. We'd make three, four, five hundred dollars, and woohoo! Um, and next thing you know, yeah. You know, well, we'll get to that part. We're definitely. I'm, I'm about to ask <laughs> you for that. Don't that's, worry. That's really how it started. That's you know? incredible. Just, and it was just kind of like also a labor of love from all of us. You know, um, we were struggling as a family, mm -hmm. and so what do families do? We come together and right. do what we got to do. Right. That's so true. Um, so actually, so you're talking about like how it is incredible a thing to like come together as a family and to produce this amazing thing and just so happens that all of you are super talented. So that's that's a definitely plus. Um, but what were like the pros and the cons of being in it? Because this idea of like being in a band and maybe like you get your friends together, that's one thing. But like being in a band with your family, I think is another. So what would you say were like the pros of that or also the cons well, of that? Well, we're also a Latino family, so you're that's true. Knows. That's true. I wasn't yeah. Say it, we're, but you said it for me. Feisty. <laughs> so yeah, there were butting heads and everything. But I think one thing that um, really helped um, keep us united is that my father and my mother always treated each of us equally. Mm. There was none of this like, oh, Selena's in the front, you know, she gets this, or I play drums, I do keep the beat. <laughs> the <whole song>. uh, <laughs> and my brother produces. You know, no, nobody had an ego trip, and I think that that's mm. one of the things that really. And kept uh, the unity of our of our family, and we also knew each one of us knew our role model. And I kind of always like to explain it, kind of like a kind of like a football team. Hmm. Quarterback knows what he's got to do. You know the wide, you know the receiver, mm -hmm. the coach. My dad was a coach. Right. My dad was our manager. Um, we let him take care of that part, and and we did our part. And I think that that's one of the reasons why. Our band was very successful. Right, right. Well, to keep the metaphor going, you were probably the best team that's ever, you know, existed in the, in the <laughs> history thing, of the earth. Very I, I, I am O. I am O. Um, okay, so well, I mean, next is you talk about you know the early beginnings, but like, what is the one moment if you if you remember a moment or like when did you actually know that you guys made it? Like this feeling of like, oh my gosh, this is actually like we we did it. Um, to be honest with you, but a lot like I don't even think like. The day that even when my sister passed, you know, I, you don't really realize what you're doing when you when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, clearly you see your your concerts are being sold out. You know, you're like, oh, you know, even at even at to that point where we were at in your career right before Selena passed, it was kind of like, oh my God, I hope we have people. Right. You know, and I hope people show up because you know, as an artist, you never really know. You know, you do you do your thing, you serve it up basically, and you. People like it, they like it, and if they don't, they don't. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think like that one scene in the movie where everybody freaks out because you hear your music on the radio. You know, we thought, oh my God, we hit it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> our music's playing on the radio, but guess what? It's not like that. Just because your music is being played on the radio doesn't mean that the ching ching is coming in. Right, right. It's the fact that, you know, it takes, it's a process, and this process took about four, five, six years before we actually started getting known. Mm -hmm. So it's not a quick process. A lot of artists think that it is, and right. it's not. Mm -hmm. We definitely did our time playing in small little venues for like, I remember Perla, um, we used to play for like, we'd, you know, we'd go for the door, you know, percentage of the door or whatever. And, um, you know, we'd be like, 25 people would show up and we'd be like, okay, so we're not, we're just gonna pack up, right? We're gonna leave, right? And then my dad's like, nope. Like, what do you mean, no? Oh He's like, God. well, you have to take this like it's practice, but just go play. Right. These 25 people, they're gonna go. They're gonna have a great time. They're gonna turn around and bring more people next time we come. Uh -huh. And that was literally the God honest truth how it happened. Right. Because every time we would come back to town, more people would come, and then uh -huh. more people, and more people. Uh -huh. And in regards to seeing the actual success, I mean, even now that she's been gone for 22 years. I'm still baffled at the fact that, hey, I'm here at Google, mm -hmm. you know, and we're fixing to release something amazing, and, yeah. and she's still being talked about. Right. 
Awesome. Um, so kind of, I, I think part of your story, obviously there's so much amazing like positivity to it, um, but there's also kind of like uh, the, the part about hardships that you guys definitely faced a lot. And I think that's part of the power of your story is like overcoming that. Um, so we know that, you know, given the fact that you were Mexican Americans in the US, but then also that you were this female led Tejano group, which yes. Tejano was like a male dominated genre at the time. It still um, is. Yeah, it still is. And you guys definitely did face those things. So how, what was it like when you were in the thick of everything, like dealing with that, both because, you know, you're this bicultural individual in this, in this, you know, in this country, um, but then also in, in this genre that's like so male dominated, what was that like? Um, definitely it was a very difficult one because Selena was so young when we started performing, she started singing when she was six and a half and professionally when she was like nine, nine mm -hmm. and a half. And so that made me we're about 14, we're four years apart, so I'd maybe about 13, 14. And then my brother is four years older than I am. And, um, you know, I guess I, we didn't, when we first started, we really didn't see it, see it, because we were so young. Mm -hmm. And my father kind of shielded us from that. Mm -hmm. And I grew up, we grew up in like Jackson, Texas, which was, you know, I didn't know what a lowrider was until my ninth grade year. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it was predominantly, you know, Anglo people, mm -hmm. some uh, black people, but very, not too much Hispanics going on. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't understand a lot of that until we started growing and then I could understand more about, okay, uh, this promoter doesn't think that we can draw because Selena's a girl. Right. Or we're kids, you know? Yeah. We were kids back then. Gotta admit that. Right, right. Like, but, that should be a factor because our music still sounds good, whether, you know, it doesn't matter how old we are mm -hmm. or what, what, you know, if Selena was a female or not. Um, I think my father dealt more with that aspect of it and saw more and felt it more. But as we grew, I will tell you that I did feel it more. And, um, you know, and it's surprising to me that it's still like that. And we're 22 years later. I still see it, and I still vibe it because right. you know I see what goes on in the world, right. you know, and I see what goes on with other artists and, right. and their difficulty and struggles. And definitely, it is no matter what people like to say, you know, it is a, more of a struggle for a woman, for a female, to make it in a male-dominated um, business than it is for for a male. Right. Right. Well, I will say that um, you guys, I think. I, we can all agree are like an inspiration for a lot of those people oh. who are dealing with that. It, no matter where you are, I mean, it, it applies to like the music industry. It applies to pretty much every industry, yeah. right? So um, I think that that's something that that definitely a lot of people can. But say. I will tell you one thing about a lot right. of that. Um, I think my father, my father always told us, you know, because we would get very discouraged whenever promoters, you know, didn't want to book us or have us at a venue or things like that, and or something didn't go right with our record company or whatever. But my father always told us, you know, oh, so you're just going to quit? You're just, just like that? You're going to quit for everything you've worked hard for? And he would just tell us all the time, we need to just, um, you need to stand up, brush off your knees where you've fallen, mm. and try again. Right. And that's always been our philosophy. Right. Our philosophy. Yeah. Philosophy. Philosophy, you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's incredible you know. words. Uh, well, I mean, going in, along those lines of like male dominated um, kind of like worlds that females definitely can hold their own in. Um, drumming, you mentioned this earlier in the talk. So, drumming professionally is definitely still was and still is very male dominated. Um, what was it like? I mean, you mentioned kind of your first reaction to to it when you were introduced to mm -hmm. it. But what was like throughout your experience in the band? Like, what was your experience um, in that role? Um, especially also, like I said, given that Tejano music, I mean, just the fact that y you were a girl drummer and Tejano music was also like a double whammy in yeah. a way. Um, did you ever consider changing instruments? Why or why not? So first, um, kind of what, how it would be experienced and then if you ever thought, like, maybe I well, should Well, okay, change. first of all, no, I cannot sing. <laughs> I get that asked so much. I would be like, why don't you sing? I'm like, well, there is a reason why I don't <laughs> sing, guys. Um, no, I mean, I grew to love you know, performing. I really did. I it grew on me. I, initially, I didn't like it. You know, you're talking about being put into a position where you're like, wait a minute. You know, um, I loved it, and I loved the fact that I was traveling with my family. Mm -hmm. um, there's pros and cons to that. Yes, we did argue. Yes, there is that. Ah, you know, and certain things that we maybe disagreed with. Mm -hmm. But at the end, we always came together. Right. And no matter if you disagreed or, or agreed, 
we always stuck to whatever, you know, whatever United. the final say, the United say was, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever we did. Um, I, I really didn't find myself feeling any different, to be honest with you, performing as a, you know, I'm a, the only, really was the only female a drummer uh, back then mm -hmm. um, in our genre of music. And for those of you don't, that don't understand what the Hana music is, or like the magnitude of it, the magnitude is about uh, this big. The magnitude of the Hana music in Latin music is about that big. Right. It is basically a um, form of music that is performed in Texas. Mm -hmm. And only in Texas, basically. Right. Unless you are lived in Texas and you moved to Chicago, now it's in Chicago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but it's basically that big on a, on a spectrum of this big yeah. on Latin music. So, you know, I take pride in saying this, that we, from having a genre of music this big, we took that music and we crossed boundaries. And it's not, it's very difficult. And don't ask me what the, how we did it. Mm. I don't know how we did it, but it we our music it didn't matter whether you were from Puerto Rico or from Cuba or from Mexico. It don't matter what what nationality you were. Our music appealed to everyone. Right. How? I don't know. <laughs> it, I don't know. I think it was a combination of clearly our our music. We were, you know, we're Mex we're Mex we're American Mexican. Mm -hmm. We're like third, fourth generation here. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up on English music. I didn't listen to Spanish music until we actually started performing. Wow. Um, it was a, a music that my father introduced to us and we're like, oh, oh no, 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 that's not cool. That is not cool. Music. No, I'm being for real. We no. were like, we were all against it. And he's like, right. no, this is your root. You have to understand where this is coming from, you know, right. blah, blah, blah. And we grew to love it, right. you know? And, um, but, you know, it's just really, I think it was a combination of the fact that, the fact that we were raised here in the United States and we listened to like, Men at Work, and you know, I was all about Janet Jackson, you know, Madonna, and you grab this, what we listened to, and then my brother, you know, fused what my father infused in us mm -hmm. with, with our culture, and then that's how we created our sound. Mm -hmm. And then adding the fact that Selena was very soulful in her singing, and you can vibe that, and you can hear that. When she's singing a cumbia, you can really hear that soulful vibe. Right. That comes from the music that she, we, we grew up on. Right. So it kind of spills over, and so it created so this like a mixture. Hybrid yeah, thing. hybrid type of music that right. we created. Well, it was the, definitely the right mix of everything. So, um, I mean, you talk about, we talk about, um, you know, you created your own thing. You, you, you know, faced a lot of obstacles and you persevered. Um, specifically with Selena, what do you feel like, um, you, know, you know, obviously her sister and like very close to her, w when you guys were kind of out and doing it, like was there, was there something that you felt like for her just like meant so much? Like one obstacle that she kind of, um, that, she, that she thought through and was like, wow, I, like, I'm really proud of myself for that or like in my career. Uh, that's an easy one. That would be the English crossover that she was working on before she passed. Okay. I mean, that was something that, um, you know, if you're on this side of, of music and mainstream is like a huge, you know, who doesn't want to go mainstream? Mm -hmm. And so that was a, a thing that from the get-go she wanted to be able to do. We wanted to be able to go mainstream and to be able to, to have a crossover album. Mm -hmm. And um, even though that, that complete album wasn't completed because she was um, murdered, you know, um, she still got to experience that, and she cried when she found out that she was actually, because it, it's, it's really a lengthy process mm. about picking out the correct song. I remember they sent us to LA um, uh, to, she had recorded an English song. I can't think of the name of it right now, but she recorded it, and um, they felt that her breathing technique wasn't correct. Mind you, my sisters never had any type of vocal lessons whatsoever. Right. So they felt that her breathing wasn't right on the song. So. They sent her to LA. I, I remember going with her. I had a blast, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had a great time. Anyway, so she went to go um, with a coach that did Michael Jackson, all these famous um, singers. Mm -hmm. She stayed with him a whole week. He coached her. Um, she comes back. She re recorded the song. And then the executives heard it and they're like, oh, we like the original version better. So they ended up keeping it the way that it was. It was. Uh, Oh my God, I, I'll think about it and I'll just blurt it in a minute, okay. but I don't remember the name of it. But um, 
It's just a really lengthy process, and right. I think that that was her main goal was to be able to do the English crossover, and when she actually was finally able to do it, and they said, yes, we're doing it, finally doing it, because she'd been telling her fans for like over, what, three years, mm -hmm. it's coming, it's coming, and then it never did, and she she literally um, cried and to, the, to Jose Bejar, which is the, who was the president at the time mm. of EMI Records, he was, I promised my fans this. I want this. I want it so bad. And it ended up happening, but unfortunately she didn't get to finish doing it. But she got at least to do some of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, talking a little bit more specifically about Selena, before we kind of get into her legacy, like what, what would you say was like your favorite thing about Selena or like something that you really, really feel oh, like? Like, come on, everything. <laughs> well, I know. Come if you had to pick one, I know there's so many, but like if you had to pick one thing, or rather like. Um, oh, I, I can tell you the one thing. Yeah, go ahead. One thing my sister, of course, all of y'all know, she had this beautiful, hearty laugh. But she was extremely goofy and very, oh, she was one to always laugh at her own jokes and she would never say a joke like all the way through correct. And then she would laugh at herself. And like, and then she'd be the only one really laughing after everybody stopped laughing. That's all and we're like, yeah, That's all yeah. yeah. And it was kind of like, I guess that was the good part because she was such a uh, fun person to be around and so easygoing and, and just laughed really about everything in life. Even when she was upset about something, she would just kind of blow it off and be like, ah, and she would crack a joke about it. Right. So I'd definitely say probably that was the, was the thing that I'm. That's that awesome. I miss the most. Right, that's awesome. Um, so moving on to kind of like a little bit of, of, of Selena's legacy, obviously it's very clear for fans, like even people, even like people very, very young today that, you know, mm -hmm. obviously weren't alive when, whenever she was. Um, she's a beacon of hope and inspiration for bicultural people all over the world. But thank you. Um, when, I guess, like, did you really feel that when you guys were in the thick of everything? And did it feel, did you feel a sense of pressure and, like, responsibility because of that? Of? Of, like, oh, like, we're actually, like, people look up to us. People were, like, a source of inspiration for people. Like, we kind of, we feel like that's, like, a weight on our shoulders. Or did you no. just kind of feel, like, love and it was, like, kind of I just, fine. we just really felt all love. There was never this, like, we... Like for instance, when we played at the Houston Astrodome, like there was like our main goal was like, God, I hope people show up, you know, like. Oh. <laughs> and then we found out that it was sold out. Like it was like, what? We sold it out. Like it was never. There was never this like, thinking about that. It was more about like, our short term goals. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And just kind of like taking it like that, and never really, thinking, about what we were doing while we were doing it. Right. So. I yeah. know some people plan their lives like, okay, by the time I'm this age, I'm going to do this. And, you know, they have certain goals that they want. Our goal was just like, dude, let's just survive and yeah. get money and uh, have a house and a car and eat and we're good. You know right. what I mean? That was our goal. It wasn't to be able to be this rock, just, oh, my God, this phenomenal right, right, right. group or anything like that. Or I hope we're inspiring people. It wasn't that mindset for mm. us. It was more like, all right, let's go play. Right. Um, Many popular artists today, obviously, I think you know, like, think of Selena as an inspiration to them, and you see them, you know, like, sharing photos of her and, like, wearing her on their clothes yeah. and things like that. So how does, what does that mean to you and your family to see that? Like, what kind of goes through your head? Uh, uh, did y'all see the Drake when he was wearing a <laughs> shirt? Uh, so cool. Just recently I saw Diplo wearing a Selena shirt, too. Right. Uh, it's, it's bring, it warms my heart. I mean... You know, it's pretty incredible, and it's very far in between, like, what is happening right now with her legacy and what's going on. I mean, we're in a different phase now. And I mean, I've, I've always seen it. I get asked, like, did you, how do you feel about this, and do you see it, and did you see this coming? I was like, well, yeah. I mean, I remember when my sister passed away, one of my, goal, my father's goals was to, he made it very clear. He wanted to make sure that nobody forgot about Selena. Mm -hmm. And, I, and we work very hard behind the scenes on, and we're very selective of things that we do associate Selena's name to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there's a reason for that. You know, I, we've been offered to do so many crazy things and we just say, no, that's not what we want to do. Like, no, there's a reason for it. I think also, you know, just, just having her presence you know, and people knowing about who she was and what she represented, mm -hmm. um, not just as a person, but as, a, a, as for our culture. Mm -hmm. Like, she is definitely a role model for us Latinos. 
Um, she inspires the youth. Um, she um, was very much about not doing drugs. She was all about, you know, um, speaking out about, um, she was, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but she was a spokesperson for battered women. She was about giving back to her community that way. She was very loving and she wanted just to like everybody to kind of like um, understand where she was coming from as a person. And I think that everybody gets that, that's, mm -hmm. that's ever heard her. And then not only that, but I think that how can you not be captivated by her 22 years later? You look at her now, she still looks very current. Selena was a, what you would consider an artist that's timeless, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you know, her look was very simple but chic and kind of like cool, right. but not over the top. Well, and, yeah. I yeah. mean, people still like copy yeah. her to this day, yeah. right? And, it's just and, like, it, yeah. and, and, and even at that, like if, even if you sit down and just block all that out and just listen to her vocals, right. you know, if you listen to her, 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 her voice captivates you. Mm -hmm. If you just listen to it, it just captivates you. And you know, and then on top of that, just add the fact that she had this amazing body, hello, <laughs> and she had this amazing personality to go along with it. So, right. she, I hope that you know, another twenty years, we're still talking about her. Right, I'm sure that will be the case. She I will certainly do my part. She was definitely one of the greats. I will say that, and I, I can say that. I agree. I agree. Um, so actually, you just started to mention this a little bit. Um, among many other things, Selena was and is known for her style and being a trendsetter. This is my note. Frankly, her performance wardrobe, everything she wore was fierce <laughs> and like on point. Um, but what was her style behind the scenes? Was it different from like Very what different. people would see and like what, what did that entail? Um, T-shirt, baggy jeans, a belt, her hair slicked back in a lower bun and very very little bit of makeup. She right. always wore makeup, but just very little, right. and a little bit of lip gloss, and that was her. Right. Very stripped down, and very like. She used to also like to grab um, Chris's shirts, and she used to just like uh, like the the Amor Prohibido video. Are y'all familiar with it? She's wearing the red. It's tied. Yeah. That's Chris's shirt. She had a big old suitcase full of stuff, and what did she pull out? Chris's <laughs> shirt. She just tied it like, and let's go. Um, the, there's also another outfit she's wearing. She's wearing all white. Mm -hmm. and it's one of Chris's shirts. She just like tied it right. and tucked it under and just made it hers. Right. Um, she was um, when she wasn't performing. Um, she was, you know, opening up her boutiques and um, she was actually working on her makeup line. Mm -hmm. She was wanting to do a makeup line. She was also looking into perfume. She already had picked out the tones of a perfume that she wanted to do. So um, she also was attending a, a business uh, university here in LA via correspondence. Um, for business because she wanted to educate herself more on the business side mm -hmm. for her business, her businesses. So yeah, she yeah. was, I have her on tape actually uh, on a thesis. Nobody's ever heard it. Really? Yeah, it kind of sounds crazy because she's talking off like <laughs> smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually didn't know that. That's yeah. incredible. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously she was, I mean, in the time, like an entrepreneur for sure and had that mindset. So that's really cool to hear yeah. that, that that was something that like behind the scenes she was really pursuing um, yeah. kind of on and a of more course, like, traditional you know, level. That and the fact that she wanted to be a mother. She was, um, you know, her and Chris wanted to have children. She wanted to have like an army, but Chris was like, whoa, <laughs> calm down. Um, and she loved, you know, of course, animals and she wanted to have, yeah, she did want to have a farm. Wow. Crazy girl. <laughs> the sky's the limit, right? Yeah. Um, so, so we talk about how Selena was, I mean, and you guys were just an inspiration to people and a hero. A lot of people consider her like a hero, her, their, their heroine. But who was hers, do you feel like? Did she ever talk about someone who she really just looked up to? Oh, that's um, easy. That my father, and my mm. father and my mother. Okay. I mean, my father played a huge role in, in guiding us. He still guides us. I mean, he still manages us. He manages my brother. And he's a, f a force, you know, that we've always looked up to. Mm -hmm. um, my mother has been always also somebody that my sister's always looked up to. I would definitely say those two people are, are, were the ones. And I still, if you ask me that question, that my, my answer is the same too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, my parents. Well, I, I um, agree. My mom is also mine. So yeah. it's, it, it's funny how that works. Right. Um, I think the last one before we kind of go into the doodle and we can open up for questions for people. Um, 
You talk, You mentioned a lot about like the movie. You, mm -hmm. you were like the anecdotes from the movie. So how was it working on that project? How accurate was it? Because that's also something that I've always wondered. And what was it like to see yourself and your family being portrayed by actors? Um, well, when they we first talked, when they first um, it's kind of crazy how the movie came about. Mm -hmm. When she passed away. Um, our lawyers in LA found out, our entertainment lawyers that found out that, you know, somebody, there was already companies wanting to make a movie, and because we live, you know, there's freedom of speech, anybody can kind of basically do everything um, without giving the consent of the family. So that's the only reason, well, that was one of the main reasons why the movie came out two years after she passed. Mm. Because we, if, if anything was going to be done, we wanted to make sure that it was done correctly, mm -hmm. and it was done. Um, the right way and portrayed Selena in the right light and not any other light just to sell movie tickets. Right. And um, so the whole process was, it's pretty insane. Like what, you know, the whole process of trying to pick a Selena, you know, that uh, they narrowed it down out of like, I don't know how many girls, like 70 some girls to like five, and Jennifer Lopez was one of them. And actually, the lady, uh, the girl who played Constance Marie, the one who played my mom, mm -hmm. she actually also auditioned for the Selena part. Okay. And so, um, you know, they narrowed it down, and this one girl, she wasn't a professional actress, and um, I, my, I wasn't on the set, but they all did tapings, like a live taping type thing, like filming, and uh, this girl looked like my sister so much. It was crazy. They dressed her up, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> but she could not act. And after like the 30-something take, you could hear all the, like my dad said that you could hear like everybody working, you know, like. <sighs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so that right there is an indication. <laughs> Making a Probably movie, wouldn't be. It, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be good to make a movie. So then Jennifer came in, and they just felt that they all agreed, the directors, the executives, and everybody agreed, and you know, alongside with our family, that mm -hmm. Jennifer was a perfect part for, you know, for Selena, you know. But the crazy thing was, what surprised us is that a lot of the, like, once they announced that Jennifer was going to do it, there was a lot of backlash from Selena, from the fans, because they're like, oh my God, how can a Puerto Rican portray a Mexican, mm. you know, blah, blah, blah. They wait, whoa, whoa, that freaked me out because, you know, um, we're all the same here, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, in my head, I'm like, it doesn't matter, she's Latina, mm -hmm. you know? And that's the, the important thing, and the fact that she's physically looks like my sister, I mean, like, body-wise, mm -hmm. um, the fact that she has dance, um, you know, background. Jennifer has dance background. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I thought it was perfect. Like we were, we were super happy. Once well, everybody calmed down, I think everybody was. But the whole process, Jennifer worked her butt off. She stayed with me uh, for about a month at my house. Um, there, I will share a story with y'all. She totally freaked me out. Uh, <laughs> she she came in like you know after a while, you know when you're hanging out at somebody's house, like you get comfortable. Well, she came downstairs, and we were gonna, we were in the kitchen, we were gonna eat, and we we're preparing food or whatever. And then she comes, and we, I have a sectional, and my sister would, Jennifer came in, and she sat right in the middle where my sister would sit, and she brought her feet up, and she grabbed the, I used to have like a little wrap thing, you know, like when you get cold, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what to call it, a throw, yeah, and she covered herself, and I'll never forget this. I looked at my husband, and he looked at me, and I'm like. But my sister would do the same exact thing. Wow. Freaked me out. <laughs> Freaked me out. And then, then, then we're cooking, and I'm like, do you think she's acting? <laughs> she's really getting yeah, into character yeah. right now. And then my husband was like, do you think, but how would she know that she does that? You know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. She was so cool to work with. Right. Constance, Eddie Olmos, all of them. They, it's a lot of work to do a movie. Mm -hmm. I just want to let y'all know. I think the... Um, the sets of the house, you know, where I'm cutting Chris's hair and all that, that was all, they, they created that, they went in, they took pictures of our house and they re reconstructed it and 
the scene in the movie with the bus where you know I'm pissed off because of the Dorito situation. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was pretty interesting because they they created a bus and it wasn't really a bus. It was like in a big old studio right. uh, area and it had like big old air tire things that to give it that movement. It was like on a bus. Oh wow! It was super cool. Okay. Little things like that. Just it was really cool. Yeah. Um, and it was very difficult to. Um, there was some times that I, you know, clearly I wasn't there every day. Um, it was also very difficult, uh, especially the scene where, um, you know, the hospital scene at the end, I completely, I showed up all like, hey, and then they told me what scene, I was like, okay, bye guys. Yeah. And I left and I just heard that it just, everybody was in tears, right. you know, and, and um, Jennifer and Jackie and the whole, the whole, um, um, crew and everybody. The whole crew and everybody just said that it was probably the most difficult thing that they've ever had to, to, to do, mm -hmm. you know, because it felt so real. But I will share on a good note, we'll end up this section on a good <laughs> note. Jennifer, when she came out of the trailer um, with the white dress where they're recreating the scene where Selena won the Grammy, I ain't gonna lie. That was probably the only time that I truly freaked out. Like, I got chills all over my body because when she stepped out, she kind of scooted her little dress down and she looked up and for a split second, I thought it was my sister. Like, mm. I like, and she goes, what do you think? And I'm like, oh wow, you look mm. amazing. Like, and then we were just kind of sit back and I just sat back with my father and go, we were just like freaking out. Right, well, it sounds like, uh you, you said it was a lot of work, but I know if, if anyone out there, I've seen it many, many times. I know, it's, it's a family gone, favorite. Right? It's, it's a family is. favorite, know, really. Yeah. Um, and I will definitely see it one more, more times. Um, and so it definitely you can tell that it was a labor of love. And, it and, and, was a labor and I love that it's there because it's something that not only for people who loved her, but it's just like a great way. I'm so glad you guys had a hand in it so you could tell the story the way right. you wanted to tell it. And it's just a great way for a lot of people to learn about her story. And I think that it helps us uh, keep Selena's memory alive. That's how right. a lot of, I feel like a lot of millennials um, can identify or understand who she was because the movie's always on. Like, they hear the music, they start seeing what's going on. Right. You know. Right. Well, that's a perfect segue into another thing that I th hope will do <laughs> a similar thing. The Google Doodle that we'll be launching next week on October 17th. Yeah. Um, my last final question before I open it up for people is um, kind of what kind of went through your head whenever I, because I, full disclosure, gave Suzette a call. I was like, hey, right. we want to do this. Um, what was kind of the first thing that came through your mind? And Are you really Google? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yes. Yes. Also, like, yeah, you're like to look a really fun <laughs> Latina. Like this is great. Um, but yeah, so like kind of what was your what was your thought when we first approached you and how has the process been for you? Um, I was pleasantly surprised, mm -hmm. you know, that I got a call from you, Bella. Um, I initially you know that when you and I started talking on the phone, I instantly found this connection with you. Um, I could hear the passion that you had on uh, presenting what you guys wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And it's all, it's been that from day one, you know, um, there's definitely passion in this creation that you guys are fixing to see. Um, sat down with Berla, I got to meet you and Kevin, mm -hmm. um, talked about details of certain things and what your idea was and we kind of twerked it here and there. And right. I think that the Google wraps up Selena completely, even though it's very short. It, you know, in the sense of, you know, it doesn't tell a, it's not like a whole hour long, right. clearly, but it, it, it's perfect because um, it sends a huge message that, you know, you can do anything you really want. Mm -hmm. Selena started when she was really young and, and she became this, this amazing artist and, mm -hmm. and she's still being remembered. And, you know, I will end it with this. Selena's favorite saying is the impossible is always possible. Right. And it is. And I think that this Google, there's that form of that totally in that because it shows the passion that you guys put into it mm -hmm. and 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 the whole creativity of, of having her young and to showing the story yeah. throughout to to the yeah. yeah is yeah. And we hope that Everyone, like I said, both fans and people who don't know about Selena will be able to learn about it. Um, and along with it, we're also going to be um, uh, launching, sorry, launching a digital exhibit of select yeah. items from the Selena Museum. So that's another collaboration, amazing collaboration we have with the Quintanilla family. And we're excited for people to see a lot of the things there. 
um, a lot of great, a lot of great iconic items. Yes, definitely. But I think the hardest thing for me is, uh, you know, you already know Latinos are like really hard to keep secrets. So I'm like, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. Hurry up! I haven't told anybody. I'm like, they're like, why are you going to San Francisco? I'm like, uh, business. I'm like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, I'll tell you later. Oh, it's like, so what are you hard. doing on the 17th at 12:01? Because I'll give you a call. Um, cool. Well, we're gonna open up for questions. Hi, thank you for Hi. being here. Oh, um, yeah, I was just wondering if there were any things that you do for your sister just to honor her memory that are personal to you that you're open to sharing. I think when you lose someone, like having, you know, these special things, or it really makes a big difference. Um, as a family, um, from the get go, from the first anniversary of her, that we of her passing, we kind of just don't get together. We don't make it a an event. Clearly, it's a day that she lost her life. Um, we just kind of like call each other, hey, hi, hey, just checking on you, seeing if you're okay. That's basically all we do. Um, in regards to me, you know, remembering her or anything like that, I don't do anything special like that. It's um, I just keep her here and in here, and I'm good. And I just try to keep her always. And even when I'm shopping, it's crazy because I'll be shopping and. I'll be with my mother and we're like, oh my God, that's Lena. Like, oh my God, she would totally buy this. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I keep her alive like that. And, and, and little things, you know, throughout my day. This right here is a total labor of love. This is, this is one of the things that brings me great joy. Um, coming here and speaking about her to you guys, it means a lot to me. Um, you know, I, I do this because I love her, because I know if the shoe was on the other foot and I wasn't here, I know for a fact that she would be here mm -hmm. doing this for me, you know, and, and so it's definitely a labor of love. So, and that, and that, and going back to your answer, no, I don't do anything in particular, and we, none of us do, not even Chris. We just kind of check on each other to make sure we're good. And some, it's crazy because some, you know, it's been 22 years, and some, some last year was really bad. Some, you know, you just want to stay in bed and cry your butt off, you know. And then the other days, you, I mean, some years you just want to like you're okay and you want to talk about her and you just you don't have no problem in that. And you want to blast the music. And there's some days that I don't even want to hear our music because it hurts. It's just um, I remember when I when she passed away, some this older man of my a friend of my father's told me, you know, time. With time, time will heal your heart, and it, I found out it doesn't heal your heart. You're, you're, you, there is a void there in your heart that will be there forever. You can mm -hmm. never feel that. What time does? It helps you deal with what's been put in front of you, and you have a choice to either move forward or just stay where you're at. And you don't do any good in staying where you're at. I learned that because I went, you know, I took about two and a half years before I figured out me again. Mm -hmm. That's how long it took me to figure out who I was again. So, but you do a lot. I think I think the things that you do. I mean, just having gone and spent some time with you guys in Corpus Christi, which was like a really awesome thing for me to do. Um, just seeing like the museum and you know how how you treat the people who come there that really want to learn about Selena yeah. and and cherish her memory is just really awesome. I think like and just watching you guys do you know the day to day and like <laughs> and all the calls and like answering questions and all of those things. I think. All of those, all the, you know, in your day to day, I see you guys honoring her and making sure that people who love her and people who want to learn about her do that. And I think that, um, yeah, in that way, yeah. it's like it's yeah, a really awesome thing that I was able to see in person. Oh, and thank I think you it's so cool. Yeah. Didn't so I had a ooh, so oh, I had a quick oh, question. I didn't even see oh, you. yeah. Hi. Okay, go <laughs> from ahead. the back. Um, so I mean, I think so. Working with Perla on this doodle and, and and the team has been amazing, and getting to meet you today is just fantastic. Um, but I think what surprised me is like I always knew that Selena was so popular, but seeing how devoted her fan base is, like through the uh, basically throughout this project, um, like do, like what is the fan interaction like with you now? Do you still get a lot of artwork or things that people are you know sharing with you and your family? Oh, yeah. What is that like? It's awesome. We had some pretty creative people uh, send some pretty amazing uh, paintings on Selena. Uh, I love interacting with uh, Selena's fans. Um, I like to hear stories about, you know, um, what Selena means to them, how she inspires them, how they look up to her. Um, I love hearing that. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's amazing, and it's a good feeling. It definitely leaves that good feeling. And you know, going back to like when you lose someone, you know, I know people die. You know, people lose their loved ones all the time. Like, and I'm super blessed. I try to look at life like that. I'm super blessed having to be able to like hear my sister's voice. I'm able to see her on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm able. To, I'm able to hear stories about how she inspires people. And that's part of the legacy. That is part of her legacy. And um, I feel that, you know, I'm doing my part to help that, mm. you know, along with her fans. Because clearly we cannot do this without her fans. Mm. So right. I'm, I feel blessed. Cool. Cool. Hey, thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, for, I have two questions. One is on my, behalf of my sisters. They <laughs> want to know what, what was Selena's favorite shoe designer? I know. I, I look down. How specific this is. Uh, I don't think she had any. Selena was one to just really shop anywhere. Um, she wasn't always like about designer stuff. Uh, she literally just if she found something. I remember one time we were shopping, and this lady goes, "Oh, I like your dress." She goes, "Thank you. I got it at Kmart." And Selena, was, I was like, "I knew she got it at Kmart." But I was like, why did you tell that? <laughs> and she's like, well, I got it at Kmart. So my sister loved shopping. If it was cool and she liked it, she'd buy it. So she wasn't really into designer designer things back then. Um, mind you, she liked the good stuff, but um, you know what girl doesn't? But she didn't have any favorite favorite. Okay. She wore a lot of boots too when she performed, so she would mm. always look out for boots. Mm. Perfect. I'll tell him Kmart. Excellent. Thank you. Something to uh, keep it simple. Yeah, <laughs> Um, in the movie, uh, Edward James Olmos, who I think is a fantastic actor, played your father yeah. um, as sort of a very dominant machismo uh, role. I think Latinos across the country can resonate that, whether it's the mother or the father. Yes. How was that dynamic in a band group, though, when you know that that's your father, but also your manager? And how much pushback did the kids give to make sure things got done at the end of the day? Mm. Um, at the beginning, I mean, clearly, yes, is that, first of all, pretty much all all Latinos understand what you just said. <laughs> because, yes, there's that male machismo, and it's just the way our culture is. Um, at the beginning, I think that's what helped us, um, because it was pretty much, hey, we're going to do this this way. And as we started getting growing, we started having more say about what. And, and actually, that's how my brother started producing our music, because um, Abe was complaining about um, complaining to my father that that the music that they were sending us was, and they were treating A.B. kind of like, eh, you know, kid, get away, you know. Other producers that were in our genre of music, they were like, ah, uh, you know. Um, and Abe was getting really frustrated, so my dad said, well, you don't like it, then do it yourself, you know. And that's how A.B. became a producer. That was, but him, what I'm trying to say is that machismo part of my father and that strict part of him pushing us and pushing mm. us and pushing us. And one thing I think that was a, uh, it didn't bother us because clearly you're raised in that environment. So it's like, okay, it's dad being dad, right? you know? But now in hindsight, I look back and I think, what a blessing. Because if he wouldn't have pushed us and pushed us and, and never let us like stop doing what we were doing, then this wouldn't have been, mm. you know? And, you know, and it's, so it's a blessing. And, um, yes, was there arguments? Yeah, there was arguments, but we pretty much were okay with things the way that they were being handled, you know? Um, yeah, there were little complaints, but nothing on a, like, kaboom type of thing, you know, like right. a situation. Right. Uh, we pretty much were in agreement. We were always like, okay, do you feel that that's what we need to do? Perfect example, um, uh, when we got signed to Capital EMI, which was our first major album, which the, is what... Uh, the date of the doodle is the, actually the, the day of this, yeah, the first October self October 17th, event. that is the doodle day is going to come out, is actually um, celebrating our first album release with Capital EMI, which is our record company. That was our first big record company. And when we were going to sign with EMI, we Sony was also interested in us. And Sony was offering us way more money to sign versus EMI. But my father told, we were, my, my father was like, no, I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. I think we need to stay with EM, let's go with EMI. And we're, we're all three like going, what are you talking about? <laughs> They're offering way more money. He was like, it's not about the money. It's the fact that EMI doesn't, this is a new thing for them, a new venture into Tejano music. They don't have any artists right now signed. So that means that they're gonna give 
full force and whatever they do to make sure that whoever is signed with them, they're going to back them and make sure that they, they go where they need to go. Mm. So it was more of a business decision that we took. And so we allowed, we stepped back and we said, all right, we'll, try, you know, we'll let you do your thing. And, and thank goodness, because it was probably the best decision that we could have ever made. Wow, cool. Yeah, thank you. And your t-shirts are fresh, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. That's awesome. Hi, Suzette. Hi. My name is Cynthia. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Um, first of all, I just want to say I love Selena, and anytime time anybody ever asks me who my favorite artist of all time is, I always say Selena. Uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> of course. You. Um, my question is, uh, what is your favorite Selena song, and do you know which one was Selena's favorite to perform? Good question. Mm. She used to love performing Rocío Ducal songs. Which one? Rocío Ducal. Oh, cool. Uh, cover tunes. Um, I don't know. She used to... Her favorite English song, or whenever I don't know about performing. Off the top of my head, I really can't say as regards to what her favorite was. But her favorite song was uh, by Extreme, More Than Words. That was her all-time favorite to the point where we'd tell her to shut up in the bus. Because <laughs> she would sing it over and over and over. We'd tell her to go to the back of the bus because she would shut up about that stupid song. Right. Um, my all-time favorite is um, uh, Yo Fui Aquea or... Uh, a lot of the rancheras, uh, yeah. No Me Queda Mas, clearly, mm -hmm. uh, but more of the rancheras like Que Crias, you know, stuff like that. Now, to me, all of them are amazing. I never listened to our music back then, but I tell you what, when I lost her, that's all I listened to, and I actually carry our music in my car because I didn't do that before. Mm -hmm. Like, people would be like, hey, give me one of your CDs. I'm like, are you kidding? I don't have my music in the car. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Uh, cassette tape, I'm sorry. Cassette tape. There wasn't CDs back then. So, um, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know what Selena's favorite song was. Mm, that's good. Thanks. Yeah. I think the one, what is the one that she used to like telling the guy off? Because she really got into it. Uh, que querías? That's okay. a good one. Remember when she's like singing to the guy and she gets down and she grabs him and she's like, she calls somebody out from the audience. There's a video of her. She calls somebody out and she goes, she, she invites a guy up and she tells him, you're going to be my boyfriend. And the guy gets all happy. And she starts calling him off his back. Now you're not like, going to be yeah. so happy about it. So, yeah. Hi. Hey. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, so obviously you spoke a little bit about how uh, this was like a family endeavor getting into the band and doing this together. But I was just wondering, like, what were your own personal like musical inspirations back then and also like what are you listening to now um back then i really you know back then i was all about janet jackson <laughs> madonna men at work you know uh pretty much what every other kid was listening to in like the what the 80s oh my god I sound old <laughs> but yeah um in regards to now I mean I pretty much listen to like everything that's on the radio Bruno Mars I like a you know I like Drake I like you know um Travis Scott I mean I listen to a little bit of everything one thing I didn't listen to back then which I was like eh, was country music which is weird because I'm from Texas mm -hmm. but um I really didn't listen to country music but I find myself you know gravitating more toward towards it now as I'm a little older. But I listen to everything. You mm -hmm. name it, I'll listen to it. Cool. I have no set preference. And in regards to like, you know, the whole mu musician aspect of it, um, you know, I think growing up and being um, self-taught because I learned how to play the drums from my dad, which is weird, I guess he is not a drummer, and also like a friend of mine that was a drummer, and our cut, my cousin as well, just getting the basics down. I never learned how to play uh, as a musician. Are you a musician? Yeah. Are you a drummer? Okay. Hmm. Well, drummers, they have to play with their wrist. I tended to play, I taught myself because I was self-taught, I play more with my forearm than I do with my wrist, so my rolls aren't as fast as what they should be. Um, but. Um, one thing I do say is that, am I a fancy drummer? No, but I tell you what, I am a solid drummer. <laughs> that's what I've been told. Everybody tells me I can keep a beat. <laughs> and that's one thing I think that's really cool about our music too, is that we never like, there was never a fight with, when my brother produced our music, there was like, you know, sometimes you get a, like a whole bunch of 
musicians together and everybody wants to take like the lead and you know and all that stuff we kept it pretty much simple and clean and I think that that also is another reason why our music still resonates um, 22 years later with a lot of people mm -hmm. it's the drummer <laughs> cool. I think we have maybe I think Tracy. Yeah, have one time for one more question. Uh, okay. Hi. Um, Hi. Thank you for being here. Thank I, you. I just want to share too, building on what Perla said. But I remember seeing. Um, I was really little when Selena passed away. I was. I think I was like ten. Um, and I'd heard her music, but I didn't really understand her story until I saw the movie when I was in junior high. And it was like the first time I saw a Latina woman in such like a leading role. And it was really just incredible for me to see um, my culture, my mother's culture, being represented in such a positive way and in like a stage that you know the, that the world sees. And it just, it just, you know, it's stuck with me forever to this day. Um, so. I thank you guys for like wanting to make sure that the world continued to know her story, even people who weren't, you know, obviously there at the time. It's like being able to have shared that and continuing to share it today. It's just it's just so incredible for the entire um, the entire world, really. Um, but my question for you is, um, you know, what is exciting you musically these days, or, or do you have any uh, personal uh, music plans uh, as a drummer? Uh, yourself that is in the, on the horizon or, or that you could share? Well, um, first of all, thank you for your words. I almost cried right now, seriously. <laughs> um, they're very heartfelt and I appreciate that. Um, I don't have any plans. Right now, I, I stepped out of that. I didn't, f when Selena passed away, like I said, it took me about two and a half, three years to find myself again. And um, I didn't find the need to play anymore to be honest with you. Um, my brother continued with his band, you know, Gumbi Kings. Um, he created a band that's been very successful. Um, but I just didn't find myself being okay with playing with anyone. Um, I didn't want to start my own band. I didn't feel like, I don't know, I just, it was just didn't feel right. And then I just kind of gravitated into um, you know, we have a production company. The product, our production company um, has three recording studios, and we have like we do we have an editing department, and we have a graphic designer in house, and we do layouts for um, CDs and DVDs for other bands and things like that. So I just kind of found myself helping my father, and just so many people calling and doing things, and I don't know, it just kind of like felt right just to be there. And so now I am CEO and president of our company, and I wear a lot of different hats. And um, will I ever play again? I played, um, we have a yearly festival in Corpus Christi called Fiesta de la Flor in our city. Um, I got up and I jammed with my brother and Jackie Cruz from the Orange is the New Black. Uh, she was down visiting for that. We had her sing, we're like, get it there. <laughs> <laughs> and, my, it was, and it wasn't planned. Literally, my brother was like, hey, you want to play with me tomorrow? And I'm like, what? And I haven't played. Um, I was so freaking nervous. You have no idea. Like, it was insane. Um, it was probably the coolest insane. I felt panicky. I didn't remember the count of our song. Like, I had a couple of drinks. And <laughs> I'm gonna lie. I, but it, it was crazy because as soon as I, as soon as that second or third beat came in, it was like riding a bike. It was mm. like, oh, I got this. <laughs> oh, I, oh, yeah, I heard this song. <laughs> it was Como La Flor. And um, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, what the future holds. I don't know. Like, will I ever play again? I don't know. I'm one of those that I'm very spontaneous, and I'm like, if I feel like it, maybe when I get a little older, mm. yeah, maybe why not? I mean, not that I'm, I'm already old. But one thing that I will say that was really cool about that night was that um, I have a son. He's 19, and he got to see me play. So how cool am I? <laughs> yeah, that is cool. How cool Pretty. am I to my son? Right. So um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe one day. Cool. Well, thank you, Tracy, thank for your you. question. Um, and thank you guys again for coming. Um, and thank you to Suzette and your family. Thank, thank you. you. I mean, this was like a dream project for me. And um, obviously, like, 
just uh, super meaningful for a lot of people at Google and on October 17 hopefully it'll be extremely meaningful to a lot of people out in the world as well I love it I love it I love it this is just this is just another um, another thing that just elevates Selena and just kind of helps us so thank you so much and thank you to Google for for coming to our family and wanting to do this to honor her and yeah. And uh, I think that her fans, you guys are going to make so many people happy. I think so. It's going to go crazy all this way. I know. I'm so ready to break the internet. Yeah. I just want to do it. I just, just don't want to tell somebody right now. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll come soon. But thanks so much, everyone, and thank you, Susan. Thank you.